Hello, people of the world, and welcome to my second tutorial. Well, I've done more than one tutorial, but... Um, anyway, today I'm going to be talking about the latest piece that I posted on YouTube, um, fully mocked up, called Flight of Conquest. Now, I actually wrote this piece a while back, so I had to run through the score a little bit and sort of refresh my memory um, uh, about the, the details of the orchestration, but... Uh, yeah, so it's a very, it's different from the things that I normally do, like, uh, uh, which is why I thought it'd be interesting to do an orchestration tutorial, because it isn't nearly as straightforward as um, uh, defending our homeland. I'm just going to remember the name for a second. Um, uh, if you can't remember the name of the piece, you probably didn't come up with a good enough name. No, I'm just kidding. But um, uh, anyway, so it's much more subtle, harmonically, melodically, orchestrally. There are a lot of really complex textures. I mean, if you, even if you just look at the score, you can see how there's a lot of stuff going on, especially in the climax sections. Um, so before we begin, I'm going to talk a little bit about compositionally. Um, I was kind of imagining that it was going along with an animated film, and there are lots of things happening, and the scene is constantly changing, rather than just being a piece that, you know, is like, for a main menu, like Defending Our Homeland, where it can really just ebb and flow in the way that it wants to. This has to, it, it didn't have to conform it conform to a picture, but um, I wanted to make it sound like it was written to conform to action on the screen. On the screen, So there are lots of techniques um, that can be used, for example, uh, weird time signatures or rhythms, um, lots of changes in texture very frequently, lots of modulations, um, and uh, uh, also going down to like um, suspenseful chords, because if you go to a still chord like that, um, the music as a conductor, if you're you know actually conducting this to go along with the film, you, when you get to a, a slow point like a chord, you can hold out the chord exactly as long as you'd like. So it's a very excellent technique for, um, so, sorry, uh, for stretching or um, contracting the music in order to fit along with the picture. So again, I didn't have to do that for this piece, but I was just practicing that art form. So um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and just play it, no performer from the beginning. Uh, the version you heard on YouTube was fully mocked up the cine samples. This is just no performer, so go ahead and play it to remind you of what what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so the melodic material, first of all, has to be much more motivic and less melodic. So, for example, the Defending Our Homeland, boom, ba -ba -dum, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. The, the, the melody doesn't sound particularly fantastic if you just, doom, ba -da -da -dum, bum, bum, bum. you know, if you stop it at any point, um, it, it feels like you need to play out the entire melody. So, for film scores, um, generally it works better if you have a melody 
that works very well if you break it up into cells. Um, for example, like Lord of the Rings, boom, bum, bum. You don't even have to complete it, and it sounds like a satisfying musical idea, and you can go further, dun dun dun, and it sounds great, or dun dun dun. And, uh, and also, the simpler it is, the more um, it lends itself to being messed with. It's sort of like, you know, symphonic development. The simpler your, th the simpler your theme is, and the more quote unquote dull it is, I don't want to say dull as in boring, but the more of the more empty it, if the more it feels like it doesn't really have an emotional character, but it's just an idea, it's just a rhythmical theme that's memorable. Um, the more you can do with it, because then you can add harmonic, textural, and all kinds of stuff on top of it to give it emotion. Whereas if something has a very clear character, like defending our homeland, it's, it's obviously a very heroic theme. It's very difficult to make it sound anything other than heroic, which means it doesn't have a lot of lifeblood in it to develop symphonically like you would if you were writing for a film. But in, but there are a couple examples of this too, where for example, um, let me see if I can find the specific one that I'm thinking of, where there's like an extra bar that probably wouldn't be there unless it was trying to conform to a to a film. Let's see here. Um, yeah, right here. So for example, you know, So it might have just gone for diddle 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 It would probably sound best if it went straight into the trumpet thing, but I was pretending as if I was writing for a film and maybe I needed an extra bar here, so you have to be really good at adding extra material, like another line, making it sound like you meant it the entire time. But that's the thing, is in film style scoring, the bar structure is often messed up, so you have to be very good about making it sound like you, and I talked about this previously, making it sound like when you have to do something to fit to the picture, make it sound like you would have done that anyway. Make it sound musically satisfying. So it presents interesting challenges. Um, but anyway, but I'm, I'm well, before we talk about the orchestration, I'll talk a little bit about my thematic material. So I kind of had a couple of ideas, themes that I come up with beforehand. Um, so the first one was, let me see if I can find a, a nice string section here so that I can show you. Okay, so um, first of all, we had this trumpet planing idea, which was really ripped off. I will um, uh, conceal the fact that I ripped it off of Star Wars, and it's been used in plenty of things. It's sort of cliche. Right, um, uh, and planing is basically where you take a chord and you just move it around chromatically, where you, it always stays in the same voicing and the same inversion of the chord, but you can just... I talked about that in one of my chiptune tutorials. It's a very useful, especially with minor chords, it's very effective for getting that film scorey sound. Um, for example, like John Williams does this a lot in the old Star Wars scores where it's like... Oh, wait, hold on. Let me see if I can find the right key here. Um... It's a really great way for de developing your material. So yeah, so we just kind of have that... Um, which I used in several places. Um, and, uh, and developed it harmonically and did lots of interesting things with it. Uh, so that's, but that's really just more of an action motif than anything. But the two main themes of this, which are used in the, in the climax, is the first one is the Happy Strings theme, which is a Lydian theme that goes... And the entire theme doesn't play out in this particular cue because it isn't always in a movie, but the entire theme goes like this. Let me just go and play it on the piano. Sorry, the G above middle C on my piano is really out of tune, so I'm always hesitant to play something that uses it in that octave because it kills my ears. But yeah, so that's the full theme, so we just kind of hinted at it here, um, didn't really complete it. And then we have the heroic theme, which is the development of that theme, which starts out, you know, doom, bum, you know, boom, dum, bum, ba da da dum, but puts it in minor. And then has a different continuation. So it's the heroic theme is a development of the happy theme. Alright, 
so and that's the theme that we use later. And we have, of course, lots of um, other ideas. So if this first bar is going to take a, a little while to talk about because it's, it's a pretty complicated scoring setup. So we'll talk about the first bar because it really changes every bar. So for the first bar, again, we have this trumpet planning thing, which is our main idea in the foreground here. Three trumpets, which are just planning on minor chords. All right, and then we have this triplet motive going along with that, um, sort of emphasizing the harmonic pushing underneath. We have it in the trombones. Right, going along with that harmonic pull. Doubled with clarinets. And again, notice how, you know, I put the trombones, mezzo forte, uh, crescendoing the forte, and the clarinets, forte, crescendoing the double F. So a little balance thing there. And also the clarinets are in a lower register uh, below their little break area so they can, you know, I, I mean, I talk about these things all the time. I don't want to repeat myself, but just uh, all the principles that I constantly talk about, I, uh, you know, implement in all of the scores as far as like balance and stuff. And then we have the violas, which have the same thing, but they have it uh, tremolo. Which gives a nice little tension to it. So those two triplet figures going along with the planing trumpets sounds like this. Right, already doesn't sound too bad. And then finally we have a pizzicato bass to um, give a nice low end that isn't too heavy, you know, but works. So there are just three ideas going along there, and they're all fulfilling the same harmonic function. So then we have this. Uh, run that you know, like this crazy thing. So, um, I'll just tell you how I orchestrated it and doubled it in the different sections because it's a little bit unique. And sometimes ideas trade off. Sometimes one, you know, they'll I'll have two ideas, and the first idea is on trumpets, and the second idea is on trombones, and then the horns switches off, supporting one idea and then the other idea. But you try to make it work and fit together like a puzzle piece so it sounds like an interesting part and it doesn't just sound like you just are you know patching things together but um, anyway so yeah first the flute right and I'm very careful with the dynamics here too do -do 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 -do, all under slur and then and then give the last one a slur to give it a sort of you know like a uh, uh, accented sort of texture kind of muddy you know blended together it's it's difficult to talk about these things but i think you can hear what i'm talking about um so um so yeah the flute pretty much just has the normal idea the piccolo waits until the last second to come in for the last two triplets and then the hit um the oboe starts off on that idea but then goes to help out the secondary idea so um, the oboe starts in the range of the flute to, you know, because the flute's in a very low register, so the oboe starts off there um, to help support it. Um, and then I use the same technique that I use in plenty of my other pieces where the oboe stops and then picks up um, an octave below where the flute is so that way it doesn't go out of its range and because the oboe is very piercing in its middle to lower register, unlike the flute. Right, and then it goes into this other idea, which is the idea... Um, the, the main melodic idea, which goes bum, ba ba bum, bum. So uh, the oboe transitions into that. Um, whereas the clarinets um, take the idea that the flute was doing earlier and canonize it. So while the upper flutes go, -da 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 -da, and while the oboes go, bum, ba ba bum, bum, the clarinets take that octatonic run that was happening earlier -da 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 -da, and uh, canonize it. And then they go into that harmonic push there, but I'll just kind of show what all that sounds like together. It's a pretty complicated texture. Right. And that's another thing. I wanted it to get really crazy and complex and then kind of burst where everyone's together. You know, and that happens in musicals all the time. And it's always a technique that I love where everyone's singing different lyrics and different melodies and you can't understand what's going on. And then suddenly they come together for the big chorus at the end. You know, kind of like maybe even Beethoven's Ninth, when all these different, you know, things are happening, and then it can, when the big chorus comes in, it just feels so fulfilling. So yeah, and then the bassoon. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going through one section at a time because that's really the only way I can do this. Um, the bassoons uh, take the bum 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 bum, bum and uh, start off with it. But then, but then it goes down to the lower bass note um, in order to 
to um, uh, reinforce what the basses and cellos are doing. But anyway, to stay in the section, so that's what the ones are doing. Uh, the horns are playing this really dissonant chord, you know, bum, 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 like to give it a real sense of like, holy crap. Right, and then they go into the other idea, but they start out with this dissonant chord and then go into a, um, a normal just C minor triad, bum, 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 bum. Right, um, and the balance again is, is fairly off here because there isn't any doubling, whereas in some of my later scores, the note performer is the final output for posting on SoundCloud because I don't want to sample it, so I actually double the horns, whereas in this one I just write down A2, A3, A4 um, to let me know what how many horns I want in the final you know, mock-up or if I was having it performed by a real orchestra. But in this particular case, um, or no performer doesn't read A3 or A2 sadly and then you know appropriately have three or four horns playing. So, um, so yeah, so we have those going on, and then the trumpets and trombones uh, also go along with the bassoon and what the oboe plays a second later. Bum, 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 bum. So I'll play all those together, right? Um, and then the strings um, very consistently stay on the runs to kind of glue everything else together. Right, along with the winds, and then doubling the clarinets are the violas, which, remember, have a canon of the first run. All right, so, and you can hear, you know, again, all the individual players have interesting parts. Boom, 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 boom. They have nice melodic sounding parts. And then the, uh, the cellos and basses still on pits have this interesting triplet motive, which makes it rhythmically even more good. Lots of weird mum bum bum, lots of tritones and weird sounding things, um, and then it kind of bursts again into this harmonic pool. But anyway, yeah. So we have the uh, um, string section with the upper violins. I'll, I'll just play the string section by itself. All right, and uh, and then we have the brass section, which remember has the horns uh, with their weird chords, trumpets on the melody. Um, the tuba takes a little bit of the double bass, not fully doubling it because it's a little bit awkward for them to move around that quickly and just because I wanted a few accents, but that's going to sound like this. Right? And then um, uh, and then we have percussion, so a timpani has a nice little do -do -doom, you know, nice little run thing, and then bum 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 dun 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 blah, 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 blah. right, typical like tremolos, and accents, and fun little things. I'll play it by itself. And then crash symbol, and then the crotales, um uh, accent the very last. Ba -ba -ba -boom. So remember the the triplets, du -du 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 -du. and they have that very last section. So all of that going together, <laughs> all of that sounds like this. And believe it or not, everything is well enough balanced that you can hear it. And even though it is really crazy, it's meant to sound like a crazy action thing. <laughs> So, and when it builds up to this consonant section over here, so the horns have this huge, really weird melody, actually. Um, I don't even know what kind of character it has. It's just kind of quirky and heroic, but also weird. It goes... It's kind of a Lydian melody, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, and the, uh, the trumpets uh, come in... A boom, bum, 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 bum. The trumpets come in to join the melody for the second half, but for the first half, they're playing this harmonic thing because everyone lands on this big D major uh, Lydian chord. So, trumpets. Right. So, the trumpets are, you know, bum, and the, the, for the top two trumpets, but the bottom trumpet is doing this, -na 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 -na, giving it this hint of insanity, you know, like. So it's constantly going between this D major, D major 7, and then D7 um, core, which makes it sound kind of interesting. And then, you know, it joins together with the horns later, so. Right. And the uh, trombones uh, play what the horns are playing an octave lower. And then finally the tuba. Um, has just a low pedal tone to kind of fill everything out in the second half. All right. 
Um, and the uh, bassoon, as well as pizzicato basses, have this nice little sort of John Williams style. Dun, 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 uh, this this nice little walking bass type thing. Right, and the uh, the flutes um, kind of take the same runs that they were doing upwards and sort of move them downwards. And their range naturally uh, has them decrease in volume. And of course, they're doubling the strings, which are going down as well. Right, and the violas have this uh, hidden little little line. Um, so uh, they're probably not going to be heard particularly amazingly in this register, but it's a nice little line that they have, and it goes well harmonically. So even if they're not heard, it gives them something nice to play, and it leads them well into their next section. So it goes like this. All right, so, and all of that, um, well, I'll go ahead and tell you the second bar. So that's for the first bar. Um, uh, so uh, what else do we have? Well, we also have the... Uh, the clarinets, and again, I'm sorry if this is confusing. This is the, the the this these first two pages are very very complicated. So I'm definitely going to post the score and the PDF. So if you want to have a closer look at anything, feel free to um, look at the Dropbox PDF file. So um, the clarinets um, also uh, fill in the harmonic D majorish type style chord there. <laughs> You know, with the sharp G there, which is like the Lydian of uh, D major. So I'll go ahead and just play the different sections at once so you can hear. And then brass section. All right, big under that. And then these strings. Percussion isn't really doing anything for that bar. And then they continue to chill down. Oboes have this chromatic weird thing. Right, and they trade off between one and two. They dovetail into each other. They don't really need it, but again, it gives them both something to play. Um, and you don't ever want to have oboes in unison, as has been previously stated. So, and then the clarinets also have a dovetailing, weird little chromatic thing. Uh, and this is all underneath it. Boom, bum, 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 bum. Um, and then the uh, uh, strings go into this triplety thingy. This augmented chord, na, 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 na. like, are we, are we sure? What's going on? And then the the bass line simplifies into this low pedal tone, right? Right. Now, that's pretty fast for them to be plucking, and in real life, um, they might not be able to pluck that fast. I mean, again, I wrote this a long time ago, so that might be something where I might revise it, or I, I they probably will surprise me and be able to play it that fast. Again, I usually underestimate what they can do. And then we have the harp, you know, being very careful. I was very careful with harp pedaling in this one because I was pretending as if I was writing for a live group. Right, do, 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 with that kind of uh, tritone weirdness. And then the crotales, which are doing a similar rhythmic thing to what the opus are doing a second, you know. So it kind of gives this weird chromatic, all these weird things are happening. Tubular bells on tritones. Right, uh, timpani on low pedal tone. Right, and this is kind of foreshadowing the chromatic section with the pizzicato strings, and then just a suspended cymbal, um, bass line moving up. That actually reminds me of Twilight Princess. Um, and then oboes, and then flutes dovetailing. Kind of weird ideas. Very chaotic, and then piccolos with their wink, 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 almost psycho style things. They just kind of chill down. So this gives it a very, again, very chaotic, complicated structure, uh, very intentionally. So then when it sort of calms down. Okay. So na 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 uh, rhythmic push along with the tuba no strings for the section and the tuba has a nice little solo line here with this nice little augmented thing which you can hear clearly in the final version 
Right. And then they just kind of chill off into this uh, um, weird pizzicato stuff. And I, um, I don't know. I try using the 12-tone technique when composing sections like this, but I find that I can get a better, less random sound if I just use my ear. So I just literally just sort of played in random chromatic things that sort of had a nice contour to my ear. But, but So first of all, the top violin has this uh, pedal tone, which starts out in the bottom octave, then goes up, and then switches. And they kind of break apart at the end. So second violins go like this. Again, nice little contour, but still just chromatic. Dun, 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 dun. Just, just little things that sound nice. I'm literally just playing random chromatic notes, but giving them a nice contour. And then the cellos. And then the bass. Jazz upright basses could probably play that, but again, I, I might simplify it uh, for because uh, the strings are so large to be plucked that fast in real life setting. But anyway, but it sounds surprisingly good. So it gives off the feeling that I want this kind of like na, 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 na. like look out, we're you know we're being we're being followed and it's that kind of scurrying through a corner or something. And then uh, I did, I did a little retrograde here, just had a little fun where I took this idea, and then uh, again with imitating with the flute, first piccolo, and then I retrograded that idea, and retrograded it with the bassoon and clarinet, which sounds like this, which gives a nice little dissonant combination with that. You know. It could just kind of an interesting idea. A nice little snare drum. Right? And then it kind of chills like... And then the timpani goes a... You know, this nice little... This uh, tremolo roll, which goes into this... Exactly what I was talking about earlier. This uh, uncertain um, tremolo string sound, which is kind of, you can kind of hold it um, and then speed up or whatever to fit the picture. And then it builds into the next section. So I'll just go ahead and play it from the beginning and see if you can catch all of that. So, now that we've gotten that over with, this next section is going to be much uh, easier. Well, it's still it's still pretty complicated, but it's going to be much easier to, um, uh, to um, once again, my camera cut out on me. <laughs> okay, anyway, as I was saying, the second half of this, or really the most of the later part of the piece, is going to be much easier to um, uh, go through and understand, much more straightforward writing, like, you know, defending our homeland. So, um... Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in part two. And if you have any questions about anything, uh, and I'll post the score, um, uh, because I don't, I don't want to go into like the harmony and all the counterpoint and all that because it would just, it would take up way too much space. And not everyone is interested in knowing that. I figure most people are just interested in knowing the orchestration side side of it. Um, but if you are interested in any of like the random little details of why I did something or something that I didn't mention here, feel free to look it up in the score and just type in the comment section, oh, hey, measure, blah, 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 clarinet, why is blah, 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 and I'd be happy to answer any of the questions that you have. So anyway, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in part two.